Let's talk about some of the long-term content. We know a season pass is coming. It's $40. Uh, there's going to be Underground in June, where you're going to get to explore the underground of the division. Uh, there's going to be Survival in the summer. It's a survival yep. mode with essential supplies and a hostile environment. And uh, you just try and survive, basically, as the name implies. And uh, Last Stand in winter, a new threat shows up, so they are going to have like sort of world ch world changing events. You got a base. That's so, so cool. I don't, yeah. I, that just seems so cool to me. So what it seems like. All right. Do you want to start at the uh, the free content drops, or do you? Yeah. Wanna... So also, also, yeah, the free content drops. Uh, incursions. Yeah. Which sounds is a lot huge. like raids. Sounds a lot sounds like strikes. Like dungeons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dungeons. Strikes. We got our, dungeons. We got our raids. Strikes. Words. It's four four player. Uh, tuned for four players, so a squad-based sort of dungeon. End game. Yeah, or squad-based missions, maybe. Yeah. The big um, r Reddit rumor was that Rikers Island would be the first raid, and that gets me super excited. Yeah. I really <laughs> hope Ubisoft does that, or yeah. Massive. I'm yeah. really hesitant to use the word raid in the mm -hmm. conventional sense because... Um, it, it denotes lots of players, and this join up and fight unstoppable enemies for the best gear. Also, yeah. they're adding loot changing with that drop, with loot trading, loot trading, yeah. loot, Which loot is trading. But it's also huge. it's still, yeah. as far as we know, a four player cap. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm I'm hesitant to use the term raid because it's a four player strike. That's all we know. But it's kind of mm -hmm. getting at the same thing mechanically. Aside from the amount of players, it's it's hopefully mechanically complex encounters, sure. uh, having a mastery of your character and mechanics, and then also having a, teamwork, a yeah. team composition that yeah. works as well as communication with your yeah. team. And that's that's the stuff that I've loved since day one of playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember but, when uh, I when I played Destiny and I did the Vault of Glass for the very first time, like the, the high that you felt when you dropped Atheon for the oh, yeah. first time great. with your friends. Like those are uh, things, those are the sort of experiences that I sort of look for in games these days is these experiences where I can't get them anywhere else. You know, I, I have to work with other people and you have to introduce that human element and I'm I'm hopeful that incursions are what that is in the division. Yeah. Um, Will they have that larger than life encounter though? I don't know. So that's another thing and um, this has been brought up by a lot of various YouTubers uh, and rightly so. They they have this aesthetic of this Tom Clancy realism mm -hmm. that is at odds with and what I feel is potentially holding back some gameplay options. Like are you going to have a giant virus zombie pop out of the sewers and you're all going to have to kill it yeah. there's going to be Telegraphs flying around everywhere and rocks falling from the cool. sky. That would be cool. That would be cool, but like, yeah. it's probably not going to happen in this game. Yeah. It doesn't fit thematically. It's right, probably, yeah. and it, it, it makes me sad. Uh, to, but I think that they can get away with it. I think the way that they've done it uh, so far has been like, okay, we have a giant dude with a flamethrower and a bunch of armor, and sure. he has weak spots. Um, he does some things that you can kind of see his tells before he sure. does his attacks. Uh, but, you know, I wonder. And, and it's also kind of... Um, as pointed out, I think I saw it first by Total Biscuit, who said that like it's at odds with the RPG element. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't. That was something that I thought I would have a problem with when I first started playing. Was like I'm gonna unload a whole clip into a guy's head and he's not gonna die. As soon as I got in there and started getting a couple of upgrades, I didn't feel that anymore. I was kind of tuned into the RPG nature of the game, yeah. and I kind of was able to separate myself. I don't know if everybody will be able to do that. This is a big head. thing that I've been hearing, is like bullet sponges, or like how can you have a, realist, a realistic game and, and still have RPG mechanics where it takes an entire clip? Like, if a guy's wearing a hoodie, he, he should die after the first shot. Um, to that I say, the aesthetic and the mechanics can live in two separate places, you know? The aesthetic is this realistic sort of uh, virus-devastated world, New York City, this sort of facsimile of what we know today. Um, and you can have that live in its own realistic bubble on top of these mechanics that do not support the realism that you might be pulling from the aesthetic, you know? Mm -hmm. You, like, I mean, Destiny's a good example as well, um, where you have... Guardians shooting guardians and whatnot, you know, headshots don't necessarily kill or whatever. That's fine. Like, you don't have to have that realism that you find in a first person shooter. You can have that realistic aesthetic on top of these RPG mechanics because it is first and foremost an RPG. And the Tom Clancy sort of uh, wrapping that's, that's put over it, uh, I think, really sells the experience, but it doesn't necessarily have to denote and dictate the, uh, the mechanics. Yeah, and I, I think if any developers are watching, I would highly encourage you to take gameplay and mechanics over your aesthetic and your established world. It's just mm -hmm. like, it's your players having a really fun time, or uh, we can't really do that because like this is supposed to be real life. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. think there's room for both. Like, you look at games sure. like... Uh, you can fight a tank. 
It's, that's the, <laughs> that's the quintessential yeah, FPS that's boss. That's true. Sure, yeah. You can yeah. <laughs> shoot the tank in the glowing spots to win. Yeah. Yep. Or um, a helicopter. <laughs> but you look at games like... For massive damage. You look at games like, uh, I don't know, Gone Home or Journey or uh, The Witness or Tacoma, and like those are much more of a aesthetic... Uh, aesthetic Great game. bosses and all those games. Aesthetic, <laughs> like <laughs> aesthetic <laughs> over mechanical <laughs> games, yeah. right? Like That's much more about the experience, the narrative, and the sort of the emotive states that you get into while you're playing those games versus... Street Fighter, which is much yeah. more about the mechani the mechanical mastery of that game. Sure. You know? And I think there's room for both of those in the division. I think that the aesthetic is super realistic and gritty and, and gross, and I love that. Yeah. And I love the RPG mechanics as well, because a huge RPG nerd, like I can't wait to min-max and get my my teal gun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, and one thing I, I loved about the uh, video they did about the DLC and the season pass is um, the narrator continued using the word foes and enemies and being yeah. non-descriptive with what those enemies would be and there are these sure. new enemies and foes. And it almost, like, my whole experience with this game feels like zombies are going to pop out at any moment. <laughs> now, I know that probably isn't going to happen. It's definitely well, not going to happen. But I do <laughs> hope that there is some kind of twist in terms of the yeah. enemies that we see in the future um, coming down the line. And I'd... You know, like conflict in May adds a new incursion, an iconic Columbus Circle zombies. Who knows? No. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> right. So on, on, uh, we produced the piece during the IGN first that it, it was about why the Tom Clancy name matters. And the creative director and I think the associate creative director both said this is not a game about zombies mm. or aliens or dinosaurs. They're trying to throw you off. Maybe, maybe yeah. it's a red herring. <laughs> 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 maybe this is the red herring in like day one. <laughs> the long con. I didn't even like, think of dinosaurs. <laughs> the opening cinematic was that was the day the zombies hit. You know, it's like oh, very funny. <laughs> guys uh, I think this oh, is that would be I think this is going to be about the human condition and about yeah. what happens uh, the human race basically eats itself when uh, when disaster strikes and I think that can be as compelling as zombies or sure. aliens or dinosaurs or zombies riding dinosaurs mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know the last one's pretty cool <laughs> overall you know with underground survival last stand the incursions sure. how do you feel about their sustainability of the product with this sort of DLC I'm cautiously optimistic I like the incursions are the first one coming out um, they add the loot trading as well uh, yeah, conflict was huge. that's an ask from the community the destiny community forever yeah add for any trading, RPG community yeah. it's like how yeah. Yeah. You know, well, you can kill I, another guy and get the gear that he's picked up. But at you can't at the same point, though, that kind of is the Achilles heel of an RPG mm -hmm. because That's true. The, the point of an RPG is to get the best gear possible. Yeah. And if you got earn it. Earn yeah, it. when Diablo yeah. 2 t or Diablo 3 took yeah. out trading with it the became, gold the gold auction. All of us were like, please don't, it. please don't yeah. take out trading. This yeah. is a staple of the Diablo series. They took it out, the game got markedly better. So I wonder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean if your buddy plays forty hours a week and you play two and he just gives you the gear that you're looking for. Yeah. I think that... How'd you get it? Oh, my friend gave it to yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, what's the... Or there's, there's no story there. Now you're going to be buying gear on, you know, third, like, black market. Like, the division black oh, market wow. is going to pop up online. Yeah. Like, uh, give it two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so I think... I'm not... Uh, I, I really, really like the inclusiveness of it. I'm not sure that for an RPG that's the best idea. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there it is. You have it. Uh, I mean, the, sec the second free thing coming out is called Conflict. It's... Mm -hmm. Quote, I think, a new way to play the Dark, the dark zone. zone. yeah. So they're going to so. add a new Dark Zone feature. I don't know what that is. It might be Zombies. Dark Zone. So <laughs> Zombies <laughs> I'll stop. Zombies, here first. Zombies riding dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, think, I think it might be maybe some sort of Dark Zone event or mini missions, stuff like that. Well, they're also adding in the free updates at the end. They said loot trading gear sets, de uh, Dark Zone features, daily assignments, weekly assignments, which are mm -hmm. uh, akin to daily quests, yeah. uh, more weapons, DZ events, and challenge mode. Challenge mode. And so having, ever since... Going back to WoW, the final time, I'll do it because we're running out of time. Yeah. Uh, I was expecting MMOs to evolve, and, and they really didn't. They just kept repeating the same thing. Yeah. And this, I've seen with Destiny and with this game, I've finally seen like the whole uh, really like chokehold on what a conventional MMO means. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit alleviated, not completely. I think the only thing that should be the determination of an MMO is there are a lot of players. But um, it's I've never seen an MMO do this where... Uh, or I, I'm using the term MMO here, but the shared world shooter, um, nice. do this where it comes out with like, okay, here's what you're buying on day one, here's yeah. what you're getting, and here's our year one release schedule to the final expansion of the year. That's extremely impressive. I'm, I don't think I've ever seen a... So, yeah, like I, you, I'm very cautiously optimistic. I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with Ubisoft coming out and saying, look, we know you guys are, are a little cautious about is this game something you're going to be playing in, in six months or mm -hmm. a year? And uh, I'm really, really appreciative of the fact that they come out and just say, look, this is what we have for you. Granted, it is tied to a season pass for $40, mm -hmm. which, it's you true. know, they have to sell that as well. And I understand that. But um, I like that we at least have an idea of what's coming out. Yeah. You know, I think Underground is going to be another story arc. Um, 
Uh, that's the first expansion. I think the second expansion, I think we all know, is some sort of horde type mode. Mm -hmm. And then Last Stand being the third expansion, I think is going to be like a base building defense kind of mode. Which is really, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited for new gameplay options too. Just, mm -hmm. and I think that that last one really sells that with like, oh, hey, you're gonna have a base with turrets and you yeah, can. Yeah, and you think like, well, base building is basically a horde mode. I think what survival is gonna be is like a horde, a wave-based horde mode, but you have to move and collect supplies and resources. Mm -hmm. And I think Last Stand is going to be that horde mode, but you're building up your base yeah. to right. repel hundreds and hundreds of guys. So I'm, I'm excited for the first year. Guys, thank you for joining me. Mm -hmm. I am incredibly excited about this game, especially after talking with you today. Agreed. Yeah, it's a couple days away and I'm super excited. Yeah. Guys, this show is a pilot, so your feedback mm -hmm. is incredibly important. Please let us know what you think in the comments below so we can make the best show possible. <laughs> and if you like it, be sure to share it with your friends because its success yeah. depends on you. Until next time, I'm Destin McGarry, that's James Duggan, that's Brandon Tyrell, and thank you for tuning in to The Division HQ.